Well, hello and good morning. Today it is a Tuesday and I have three sessions today in the studio. And in between, I'm going to share a little bit about the differences between speed lights and like studio strobes. Uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate what I use and how I use it. It was requested by some of you. So I read the comments and then I see uh, the topics that you guys are interested in and then I try to um, record a video concerning that topic. So first I have a Kicksmith session with a little girl. Uh, it's gonna be pink and gold and colorful and bright. I'm gonna show you the cake and the setup in a second. And I'm gonna show you what I use. And then I'm gonna set up for a cake smash session with a little boy. And it's gonna be a boho themed cake smash. So it's gonna be light and neutral and like very natural and just a lot brighter. I'm also gonna share the settings and I'm gonna show some photos. Uh, just to give you an idea of what I use and I'll explain why I use it and then as a third session I have a sitter session with a little girl so no newborn session today um, but I can still share how I use my light during a newborn session so first I'm gonna take down this background because I'm not using it today uh, the parents have chosen a, a pink background which is actually a smaller one than I would rather use like this one is two meters wide and I think it's like four meters long I like them to be at least three meters long the pink one I'm gonna throw on now is only two meters long so I cannot create a lot of distance between the girl and the background but that's okay like she still has a nice decor which is surrounding her with the cake and it all looks very pretty but normally I would place the child a little bit more to the front so you get nice blurry background um, when you photograph with an aperture of like 3.2 or something um, but anyway I am going to take down this backdrop it's vinyl the other one I'm gonna throw on the pink one is vinyl as well so I can just easily like wipe it clean after it gets dirty with the cake so here we go <laughs> So here I have the decor for the portrait photos and then when she eats the cake I'm going to remove the bench and the letter swan and she's just going to sit there in the middle of her decor eating the cake. Okay, so I just finished with the cake smash session. I wanted to show you my light setup beforehand, but they came uh, really early, so I finished. Um, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to make my own feather garland with some green. So I've just been crafting this uh, garland with these colored feathers, they're green, and I'm gonna hang them up and see what they look like. The feathers might not be a really good idea because they're sticking out. Um, is another way to attach them to the rope? I guess not hot glue? I don't know. Here you can see that half of them are sticking out and it doesn't look very pretty. Maybe it's not the best idea. So here we have the very awesome cake. I'm just going to put this wooden thing on there and then put the cake on there. And then I'm gonna decorate it with eucalyptus leaves. So this is the cake still pretty naked it's for a boy actually i really like it with the flower flowers can be for boys definitely okay so i have some fresh eucalyptus and i'm gonna put it on there to decorate the cake let me cut off the ends and then i have some eucalyptus here in the bottom i'm just gonna quickly run to the flower shop outside to see if they have some other cool like plants and flowers that i can add so I'm going to take some photos of the cake with two different backgrounds. Uh, one with the feathers and then one with like 
uh, garland which has one and I'll probably use the one with the one for the actual cake smash. Okay, so what I use in the studio are speed lights. I used to have strobes and I actually switched to speed lights. And I'll explain why in a second. First, I'm just explaining the ones for us. First, I'm just sharing the ones that I have. This is a Nikon speed light, the SB700. Uh, here on the back, you can see the settings, like the options. Um, it can work together with your camera when you have it on TTL mode. You can do it manually, like see how strong it is. You can make one speed light the master and the other one um, the remote. So you can put one on your camera instead of a trigger and then uh, send a signal to the other one and they will flash at the same time. I have two of them and I'm looking into buying a third one and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. So I used to have strobes uh, and they were connected to power cords. Um, they could, you know, flash with a lot of force, but I realized that I don't need that much like flash in my photos. I like it to be very soft and natural. I don't want the kids to blink with their eyes whenever I take a photo because the flash is so strong. So I was always putting it on the lowest setting anyway. And then I saw this 50 inch Westcott softbox. And as I looked into it, I saw that I could use this one perfectly with a speed light inside. As you can see on the inside of my softbox, I mean, this is just like a light stand. It has a little adapter and you can attach very easily a speed light on here. The umbrella is coming through the hole of the little adapter and uh, I can move it higher. I can uh, put it lower. I can change the angle. Uh, and the speed light is actually facing like the other way, like it's flashing into the soft box and then it gets reflected by the silver uh, stuff that's on the inside. And it actually has the effect of kind of like a big window. So what I like about speed lights is that you don't have any like cables going through the studio. There are no power cords uh, because they have batteries inside. Here I have four AA Anna loop batteries. What I don't like about this speed light is that I cannot see if my battery is running low. So at some point it's gonna stop working. Well, a few seconds before it stops working, you see like an actual battery image like flashing, uh, but then you only have a few seconds and it dies. So it's not like you can see like whenever you want how much battery you still have left. So at the beginning of a session, it would be nice if I could check it. So I need, I know if I can change the batteries. The batteries usually last like, I don't know, five, six, seven sessions. I can do a whole wedding with just one a set of batteries uh, in my speed light. It also depends on how much I'm using it, of course, because sometimes during a wedding you go outside, I don't use it. But usually in a church when the bride is getting dressed or in a city hall, I would use this speed light on top of my camera to bounce off the wall or the ceiling to get some extra light in my photos. Um, so yeah, when I do a newborn session, I just use one speed light and I have it in my Westcott 50 inch softbox. Um, and it's not like this in the softbox, there's actually a trigger underneath it. So this is a Yong, Yongnuo trigger. It's the RF603N2. Um, and I have it in here. I'll just lock my speed light on top of it. I will turn it on. It's like on channel one. I'll turn this one on. This is now set on one slash 32. So it's not on the strongest setting. It's, uh, it can go up to like one slash one until one slash 128, which is like the softest. This is one slash 32. So it's quite strong, um, but because it's like diffused, there's no harsh shadows on the photos. The kids don't blink with their eyes, but you still have some extra light in your photo and a beautiful catch light in their eyes. So now I'm just using one speed light and there's a trigger underneath it. And that's one way to photograph. So you can do a, put a trigger on top of your camera um, and then one trigger underneath your speed light. And then um, 
you can take a photo. So I'm going to take a photo of the cake, which is one speed light. Uh, I will have my shutter speed 200, my ISO 640, and my uh, aperture will be 3.2. I will insert the photo. <laughs> Whenever I'm photographing a newborn, the only light I'm using, well, I'm using daylight and I'm using one speed light in the softbox. Uh, sometimes it's on 1 slash 64, so it's not very uh, strong, the light. And it depends on the amount of daylight I have coming in, skin tone of the baby, the color of the backdrop. Depends on so many things. Um, so now I want to have a little bit more light in the photo. Uh, which I use during a cake smash session or a sitter session or sometimes a maternity session depending on um, the effect I want to have in the photo. So I'm going to put one speed light on top of my camera. And this is one of the advantages as well with speed lights. They're so flexible, no cables, no power cords. Um, they always work, they communicate well. I used to have strobes with triggers. Sometimes they work, sometimes they didn't. So I would have like three good photos and then one was not like underexposed and then I would have three good ones again. So once every while they just <laughs> didn't flash. Uh, with the speed lights I don't have any trouble. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the trigger because now I don't need it anymore because the speed lights are communicating with each other. And I will just insert this one here. I'll put it on the remote setting. So it's going to take its command from the speed light that's on top of my camera, gets its signal from the hot shoe of my camera, and it's on the master setting. Here I can also determine how strong my flashes are going to flash. I'll put them both on the same strength because the one that's pointing towards the ceiling will bounce off the ceiling. The ceiling is white, but it's quite a high ceiling. As you can see, so it's gonna take, like the light is gonna soften by the time it gets back down because it's gonna reflect on the ceiling then come back down because the ceiling is quite high. I will put it on the same setting as my softbox which is a lot closer to my subject. So that will actually be the main light and then the one from the ceiling will kind of be the fill, fill light because uh, I like my photos to be light and bright. Still have some depth and I uh, have some shadows to create like a three-dimensional image. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it. So now I'm going to take a photo of the cake again with the same settings. And then you'll see the difference. So yeah, another big advantage of using speed lights is that you're really flexible as to where you're placing your light. In the middle of a session, I can just move my light to the other side. Like sometimes I have siblings holding the baby and they prefer the baby's head to be on the left side instead of the right side or the other way around. And I can just move my softbox to the other side. Uh, same with the parents holding the baby when they're left-handed or right-handed, it can make a difference. Um, sometimes a baby is in a prop, you know, with their face on their hands and they suddenly turn the other way. Like instead of, I mean, instead of this, they will be like this. So I want my light to come from this side. And when the baby's head is on this side, I want the light to come from that side. And I can just move my softbox around. It's very light. I can just lift it up. No cables connected. It's not attached to the ceiling. So I'm very free and flexible as to where I place my light. For now, I'm just going to change the banner and then uh, set up for the boho themed cakes my session with the little boy. And I'll probably place my light on that side. I'll show you how high I have to put my ISO to get the same effect with just daylight. So first let me take one with uh, my settings as I like them. ISO 500, shutter speed 200, aperture 3.2. And now I'm gonna turn off my flashes. And I know that if I keep my settings the same, my photo will be quite dark with just daylight. So I'm gonna crank up my ISO to 1000 and then take the photo. And it's still a little bit dark. So I would have to go to ISO, I don't know, 2000 to get a similar effect, but you'll have so much more grain in your photo. So I'll show you the photos as well, but I really like that I can just put my ISO at 500, use my speed lights to get a nice and bright image without too much grain um, and having to really crank up my ISO. So for now, I'm gonna set up the background for the portrait photos. Okay. 
Here we have the decor for the portrait photos. Very cute and simple. So pretty. But yeah, nothing's gonna be wasted. The parents are gonna take the cake home afterwards and enjoy it. A cup of coffee tonight. They're not gonna throw it away. So what do you do when clients come like 25 minutes late? So I'm having my coffee, lunch, um, it was fun because my mom just came over because she was working nearby and I have a little break right now in between sessions so she came by so that was really nice. Um, so I finished the cake smith session, I filmed a little bit so you could see where the soft box was, like the position of the soft box where I was sitting. So yeah, very lovely boy, he was enjoying his cake for sure. Um, I asked if I could film so I had my camera somewhere high and then it kind of slowly tipped over So I filmed just a little bit but a few seconds just to show you My setup that's all for uh, all you need. So yeah, my uh, I'm just gonna name some advantages and disadvantages of using a speed light. So I'm really curious as to what you are using. Are you using strobes? Are you using speed lights? Are you using just uh, daylight, like natural light? And why? Could you let me know in the comments? That would be really interesting. So um, I do not recommend you to buy this one. I had four of them and I only have one left and the other three just broke down like the bottom part would fall off uh that's what happened with two of them um and the other one just oh yeah the buttons don't work anymore so i only have one left i do use it still sometimes when i'm photographing um, um when i'm uh, doing a maternity session and i want to have a backlit image because then i use two speed speed lights to uh, make the background white like they will be very close to the background and pointed towards the background the model no oh, someone I don't know someone just tried to call me but it was just like one second anyway so and then the model would be standing a little bit more towards me and there would be like one speed light coming from the soft box to give her the catch light in her eyes and to light up her face so when I'm backlighting, I use three speed lights um, and I have to use four triggers at the moment because these two speed lights, they don't communicate with each other. This is a Nikon, this is a Yong Yu, Yong Yu. So what I really like about speed lights, number one, no cables, power cords. Um, so yeah, kids cannot trip over the cables or the power cords. You don't need a lot of power like sockets outlets i don't know because um, they go on batteries they're very portable you can just lift up your softbox place it on the other side because there's nothing attached to these speed lights um, they are very easy to carry with you so i mean when you're like a photographer who is teaching workshops and every time you have to bring your strokes with you in the airplane and everything can be quite hard this one is super easy and light to take with you um, it doesn't break easily. I still always have them in their covers, so they're well protected, but um, I think they're less fragile than a strobe. They're cheaper as well, I think. I'm not quite sure. Um, downside is that you don't know if your battery is running low until the very last minute when it is not functioning anymore. Um, any other disadvantage? Not for now. Someone's calling me. So the advantages of a strobe are they are much stronger, I think, in power. Sometimes I have to... I mean, you can get this one to be pretty, 
bright as well but i think with a strobe you have more power uh correct me if i'm wrong uh advantages of a strobe i'm not very good at advantages of a strobe because i had some strobes and i didn't like them as much and now i have speed lights and i love them so i'm a little bit biased uh, but that's why it's interesting to leave in the comments whether you are using strobes or speed lights or natural light and why like because then you'll probably read some advantages of strobes of people using strobes and loving strobes oh what i do like with the strobe is that you can have this like light on how do you call it i think it's called a model light i like that with the strobe that you could have this like continuous light going on so you already know how the light is falling on someone's face like you already see the shadows and stuff so this um speed light doesn't have like a model light so if i'm not taking a photo my softbox is just not doing anything and i think with a strobe you could have this continuous light like a model light that's in your softbox and it's on and then you can already like see how the shadows fall for example on the face of a newborn and then you take the actual photo and then the flash comes through and it's like a little bit stronger like there's more power going on but um you already know kind of where the shadows fall that's the, i think the big advantage of using a strobe by the way i just googled it it's a modeling light so yeah determining what's best for you like whether it's a strobe or a speed light really depends on how you want to use it for which purpose if you want to use modifiers um, if you want to use your flash outside as well or just in the studio i've just set up for the sitter session so i might film a little bit during the sitter session i will use the same setup as during the cake smash session two speed lights one on top of my camera pointed towards the ceiling one in my softbox and um yeah i will just show you my setup for the sitter session so this will be the first decor with my two blankets here's the light i'll of course close it after i turn it on <clears throat> camera still there um if she can already sit by herself she can sit there as well or otherwise lie on her belly lie on her back here we have another decor same idea if she's not sitting stable enough yet we'll just have her on her belly and on her back with the blankets here we have another decor my floral circle she can lie on her belly peek through or sit in it by herself depending on how well she's sitting and then here is another decor changing table lots of cute outfits that they can choose from um so yeah i'm all ready So I really hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned a little bit more about speed lights and strobes and I can never tell you what to get because it really depends on your um, situation. Do you go to people their homes? Do you have your studio? What kind of photography do you do? What kind of um, effect do you like in your photos? Do you want to have more contrast, less contrast? Do you want to have like, more dramatic effect or more, I don't know, natural effect maybe? Um, but this is just my opinion. This is what I think. This is what I use and how I use it. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Please, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, leave a thumbs up. I would love to read in the comments what you use. And then you'll see me in my next video. And I will hopefully see you in the comments. Bye bye.